Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in to Cameras Rolling. I'm really excited about my guest today. So I have not had Hartford Stage on for a while and I know that all my viewers are regular theater patrons so without further ado I'd like to introduce my guest Antai Bilgatai. Bilgatai. Dang it. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> so Very close. close. Antai Bilgatai, yeah. the development of marketing. The development director. Development director and at Hartford State. Yes. Okay I got that right. Absolutely. Didn't I eventually? Yeah. <laughs> oh wait one more time. Antai Bilgatai. That's right. Perfect. Rhymes. From Hartford State. Yeah. Okay, so I'm so glad you're on. Well, and of course, I, 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 I have to share this with, with my viewers. This is too great of a story. <laughs> so we have a mutual friend, and I know a lot. Jacques Lamar has been on my show, what, four or five times now? And <laughs> I, I was at his party, and Antai's at the party, and we're talking about being from Minnesota. We're, we're from the same town. We're from the same high school. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and it's a high school that is kind of loathed throughout the state. So we were very we were, trepidatious yeah. about, well, I went to a high school in a suburb of Minneapolis. Exactly. Yeah, you went, you went oh, I think it's a smaller town. Yeah. <laughs> we finally realized that we could talk about it. Yeah, it's yes. like, yeah, we're, we're from Edina, Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. it's funny because... We're, we're called the, the cake eaters. Yep. Every day I need attention. Yes. That's what Edina stands for. Every, every day I need attention. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, so, but, and then also a really neat thing is that you are also involved in the creative arts. Yes. Uh, I'm a playwright myself. I used to you, be a, really? an actor. I haven't acted for um, almost 20 years now, but uh, still a writer. And wow. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. Okay. So. When did you move out here? You moved from Minnesota. What were you doing at Minnesota well, prior? Well, so I actually, it wasn't a direct route. I was in Minnesota for most of my life, and mm -hmm. I was working at the Guthrie Theater most recently, a big Renowned regional theater Renowned Guthrie. There. Oh, I mean, gosh. as people who grew up there, it was like, it's why it's, we loved it. I mean, the, yes. it's one of the greatest theaters in the country. Right. Um, then uh, I moved with my partner to Dallas, Texas, y'all. And yeah. uh, I was at Dallas Theater Center there for five years, a little over five years, uh, before the siren song of Hartford brought me here. Okay, and you, and you were doing the same type of thing yeah, when you were in doing Dallas. fundraising uh, through, throughout the whole path. There. Right. Now, since, since you said that you, you love to act and you started in that, in writing, do you, do you still feel the, the, the creative itch when you're oh, doing yeah. this side of it? Good. Yeah. You just, you know, that, that's why I'm, I'm doing the show. Because right, even, sure. even though I, I love to act, it's, this is something that keeps me in the, in the creative dip, that I know what's going on and right. things like that. You know, yeah. I, love, I love, you know, working at a regional theater like Hartford Stage is exciting because you get to uh, watch amazing classics be interpreted. And as someone who has studied those classics, it's really exciting to see really good productions of them getting mounted. But then we're also doing a lot of new work. So seeing up and coming writers, seeing brand new musicals yes. evolve, it's, it's very exciting. I'm a, I'm a big musical theater nerd, so it's, Right, it's really right. fun to watch those come together. And when did you come over here? Uh, I arrived here in the fall of 2015. So I've been here just about a year and a wow, half. Wow, yeah. you're, you're a babe in the woods. Yeah. Although I went to college at Yale, so I, I'm familiar with Connecticut with a little this, bit. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> wow. Okay so, okay, so then if you were here counting those months, you were here with the, with the Kevin Bacon play. Oh, yes, for oh. Rear Window. Oh, my gosh, that was exciting. <laughs> oh, I love the And it was so funny because I remember it did not get the greatest reviews from our critic at the time. Right. Who, who's no longer with the current. <laughs> um, but 
Um, it didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter because yeah, it sold out. It's, it's right. Kevin Bacon, and I when I when I went to go see it as, as an actor, mm -hmm. I loved it because I had no idea he could be vulnerable on stage. Yeah, and actor to actor, I could see him like I even saw a little panic like what what's that line or 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 he had he had gaffed like a line or a word and he needed to hurdle over it. I loved seeing that, <laughs> yeah. but I loved the set. The set was fantastic. I mean, Alexander Dodge I, is a genius. I've and, never, you know, I was telling my friends. Um, oh, and those for, for those of you who couldn't see it, it's uh, the the play the the Rear Window. And if you've seen, it's the, based on the same story that the Hitchcock the movie Hitchcock, is made. yeah. But the set with all of the different windows, I think, surpass things I've seen on Broadway. I mean, even even Lion King because it was so detailed. Well, you know, it was amazing. Can I brag about our, our scene shop for just a minute? Yes, please. So you know, it was a show that when we saw the design, they were kind of intimidated by it. And they actually thought about, you know, hiring out to do it because it's so complicated. And, you know, the set did all these tricks. I mean, walls disappeared and, oh. and set pieces moved oh, and around. Then, yeah. And then yeah. during the during the, the little love scenes, oh, yeah. yeah, everything just kind of like melted away. And it was, oh, it was amazing. It was fantastic. Okay, yes. And so there were a lot of engineering things that, hadn't been invented yet and our, our scene shop, our craftsman figured it out because I guess there was some uh, Disney on ice tour that was taking <laughs> up all the scene shops on the East Coast so we couldn't shop it out. We had to figure it out oh, ourselves. Oh, isn't and that they did. something? And it's amazing. They, they brought that design to life in such a brilliant way. Oh, it, it, I just loved it. And it was a, it, it was a real uh, pride for, for Hartford. Oh, absolutely. To have Kevin Bacon here. I mean, and uh, and, and Darko a, did such a, a great job for directing so, it. I yes. mean, Darko's vision for that piece was so film noir. It was just oh, edgy and tense. Oh, it was wonderful. And, it was, yeah. yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah. And of course, Kevin Bacon did tell me once, because I met him at, at a premiere, <laughs> that, that he would come on the camera's rolling show. Oh. So you've done it before, Kevin, because oh. <laughs> lucky you. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm so I'm like waiting for like when am I going to collect that favor? Well, Who knows? It'll happen. <laughs> Who knows? So, all right, tell me more about the season okay. since since you've come here and what what changes you've seen at Hartford Stage. Well, that's kind of a, a hard question to answer with just you know 18 months under my belt. But what I can say is that. Uh, in even just the time that I've been here, the excitement about what we're doing in terms of new work is really incredible. Uh, we just announced on Wednesday, yesterday, uh, our new season for 1718, which starts in the fall. And we have three really exciting pieces that are going to be uh, brand new to the stage here. Uh, a play called Seder by Sarah Gancher. It's a wonderful intense family drama. It's set in Hungary at the fall, just after the fall of communism. And it's a Jewish family. Uh, they've not really been allowed to practice their Judaism. They were kind of raised right. without religion. Uh, and they come together to try and have their first Seder. At the same time, uh, there's a museum that opens in uh, Hungary of atrocities of the communist regime. And their mother they knew that she had been a, a secretary for the KGB, but then they see her depicted on a wall in the museum as one of the murderers in the Hall of Murderers. Stop. So what a plot! <laughs> there's a lot of family drama. Yeah, it's called Dysfunction Junction over there. Yeah. Wow. So it's a really interesting yeah. play, and it's based actually on a true story too. So there's this weird reality about it as well. Well, and plus, and I'm just I'm just thinking of all the great characters that yeah. play like that. Like, come on, hot darling, come on. You know, it's like that. Uh, I guess that wasn't very good, but you know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what else? Then, uh, in the spring, about a year from now, we're going to be doing a play that's playing at the McCarter Theater at Princeton right now. It's a brand new adaptation of Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. And it was adapted by Ken Ludwig, who you might remember as the playwright of Lend Me a Tenor. Uh, yes. And it's directed by Emily Mann, world-famous uh, artistic director there at the McCarter Theater. Uh, it's a beautiful production. A-list designers, uh, Beowulf Borat did the set. William Ivy Long did the costumes. It's just stunning who to are, look who, at. Who are the actors in it? Um, honestly, I couldn't remember their names if I oh, well, <laughs> was so, pressed, so but it's a really wonderful cast. They're, okay, I mean, but uh, so you're not Im importing, though. It's more like the regional actors. The production yeah. will be coming. We think we'll have most of the cast as well. Cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a, it's it's what's great about the production is 
It's got the tension of a mystery, like a, an Agatha Christie mystery, mm -hmm. but Ken Le Guin is just a, such a funny writer. Oh, he's a, there's, I there's love just Levy great Tanner. wit. It yeah. feels like uh, like an old movie, uh, like a 1930s movie comedy, or like one of the Thin Man movies. You know, kind of that genre of right. like mystery and comedy together. Well, and plus, and and let me a tenor. There's there's a real rhythm to to his yes, writing that absolutely. that keeps you riveted the whole time yeah. with with that dark humor. It's perfect. So <laughs> yes. I I can imagine it's. Wonderful. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful production to look at too. The the costume. I mean, there's one costume in particular. It's just Art Deco glamour in all its glory. You'd look fabulous in the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Say it again. You'd look fabulous Thanks. in the outfit. <laughs> Why do you say no? <laughs> okay. What else? And then I'm pleased to, uh, for all the literary fans, and not that Agatha Christie isn't literary, mm -hmm. but for the higher brow literary fans, yes. we're also doing a world premiere adaptation of Edith Wharton's The Age of Innocence. So Douglas McGrath, who wrote the screenplay for Emma, who wrote uh, the book for the Carol King musical Beautiful, right. uh, he's re adapting the story for the stage, and it will be directed by Doug Hughes. Uh, it will be wonderful. I just finished reading it. It is a really sharp, smart, uh, uh, moving adaptation of that novel, right. so I think people will really love it. It sounds epic. Like I'm, I'm picturing a lot of ornate. Oh, there'll be yeah. there'll be design elements. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and I think it's a great opportunity. If you know the plot, you know it's kind of a love triangle, uh, and it's all about the the social strictures of of New York in the the late 1800s, right? And what is proper and what is not proper, and what is scandalous and what is not scandalous. And so uh, those three central characters are just such meaty roles. I'm really looking forward to seeing them on stage. Oh, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What else is well, that? Those are the three the, new those plays. Are the three well, that, that, that keeps us covered for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but we're also opening the season uh, with a Shakespeare play. We haven't opened the season with Shakespeare for a long time. And uh, as you probably know, Darko has done such a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. uh, Darko Treznik, who is our artistic director, uh, he is passionate about Shakespeare. And he has really uh, brought new interest to the Bard right. at Hartford Stage. And he's going to open the season with A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is probably the most popular and most fun of all of Shakespeare's but it's, but it, plays. It's, but it's perfect. Yeah. It's so whimsical and fun. It, it's whimsical. It's yeah. hilarious. It's got something for everybody. Um, and he's been talking about the design elements as being more about light and space. He's got a number of visual artists that are his inspiration. So it'll be interesting to look at as yes. well. He's designing the set. Wow. <laughs> and now, in Dar Darko, how long is, do you know how long he's been at uh, the I stage? believe he's, he was hired in 2011, and his first full season, I think, was in 2012. Okay, yeah, because he's doing very well. Yes. Really well. In fact, right now he's in New York. Uh, the production of Anastasia, the world premiere musical that we yes. did last spring, is opening in New York. It's just started previews. It's been doing gangbusters already, and we're really excited about that. I think people uh, are really paying attention to this amazing new work. Well, and also speaking of paying attention, now th this is what's so great about the Hartford stage. Mm -hmm. you, you really feel like like you, you, you get that in. Mm -hmm. And who knew if you live in Hartford that, <laughs> that you could have an in prior to New York City? But we had gentlemen. Gentlemen's Guide to Love and Murder went on to win four Tony Awards. Yes, <laughs> and that started at Hartford stage and now Anastasia, which was glorious to watch. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a beautiful show. Oh my. <laughs> it was just beautiful. You know, and now that's going to Harvard Stage. And so we could actually go there and say we're like sitting next to like Frank Rich or whoever. You, know? <laughs> you were like, well, I already saw this at Harvard Stage. Yeah. Well, you could talk about the, the little changes that they've made yeah, since the like, Hartford it, production. It, it's not quite up <laughs> to Hartford standards. <laughs> but it no. is really nice. And a lot of people don't realize that about Hartford Stage is that there's so many innovative place. It's right. not it's not just tried and true, you know, the the usual stock plays. You know? Right. I mean we do yeah. really wonderful productions of, of existing plays, but the, yes. the new work is I think what's make it makes it very exciting. It to makes work it there. really exciting. Yeah. And what 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 are they doing with all of their their changes like I I know they they changed the lobby. Yeah, so we have renovated over the last oh, five to ten years pretty much everything in the building. Uh, we started with the the theater space itself and made it much more adaptable. It can now transform from a thrust stage to a proscenium stage. Uh, mm. There are trap rooms underneath. There's better wing space and an opportunity I, to use this, the, right. the 
the stage elements. So you have all the fancy dancy like the ropes and pulleys. Yes. Guys. See now I always thought you had that because of your Christmas show. I always thought there were trap doors and all that. No? You know I haven't been here long enough to know for sure but I know that they've enhanced whatever they had. Nice. So we are able to do much more. Mm -hmm. Then the second phase was really making the public space more comfortable and welcoming. Um, Actually, I remember coming to see a show uh, at Hartford Stage when I was in college, and I thought, hmm, <laughs> what is this space? <laughs> right. And now you walk in, it's got this beautiful red carpeting, yes. there's glamorous wood accents, there's high-tech uh, LED screens. It, it just feels much more exciting to go in there. Yes. And the seats are more comfortable. They're, oh, they are. They're, they're way more comfortable. Did that, that came that was with part the, of the renovation? renovation? In fact, we're about to open a show uh, by James Lacine, and he had acted with us several seasons ago before the renovation, and he loved working at Hartford Stage, but he, he dreaded coming back and looking at those seats. <laughs> and so he was so delighted to see that the, the seats looked different. <laughs> right. Well, in, but the best thing, of course, is it's for, for being able to seat so many people, it's still such it's an, intimate. an intimate theater experience. Yeah. You know, it's it's almost that. 500 yeah. seats, but it, it doesn't feel that big. It feels it's much five, small. Is that adding on more seats? Or no, it's, uh, it's always been 500, I think. It's always yeah. been, I think, about 480. Right. Uh, if we do a proscenium configuration, which is the more traditional picture mm -hmm. frame for the, your viewers, <laughs> the yes. more traditional picture frame style, uh, we actually put seats on the floor and we can then get up to, I think, 525, 530 seats in the house. Okay, now I'm gonna, I have to play devil's advocate here mm -hmm. um, because some, some of my viewers are a little bit resistant because of parking and traffic and all that. Um, it, is there good Apple parking there now? You know, I, I mean, think they the, use the structure there, right? Right. We have a parking lot right next door, a garage. Okay. Um, there's actually one just down the block next to the Hilton so Hotel. So there's two then. There's two that you can use. Okay, uh, because um, some, some people think that, that there's still only one. No, there's, okay, so I mean, there's, there's there's one adjacent to us, but there's also one just down the block. Yeah, okay, good. There's yeah, a surface lot a block away, too. There's there's an ample parking. I mean, you know, we'll all have to figure out what happens once the the uh, yard goats start playing. Uh, right. We might be competing for those parking spots, but right now we got plenty of parking. And and it was it was fine during the, the Kevin Bacon run? Because I know all those shows were sold out there. Yeah, those shows sold out, but, you know, there was space for people to park. You might have had to wait a little to get out of the parking but lot. But not at the anything. End. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah. Because that's I I love Hartford Stage so much. But knowing some of my my viewers, mm -hmm. that can be their their only resistance is because it may feel uncomfortable for them that it's not, you know, that it's not mm -hmm. easy. Oh, I, I think it's very easy. In fact, okay, since good. the renovation, now we have a door that connects right into the parking garage. So you oh, good. Have to so step you don't outside. you don't have to go walking down yeah. and walk around. Perfect. So. Perfect. Okay, so tell me, so you were in drama. I was. And you're writing. Mm -hmm. So what did, what did you envision when uh, when we go back to to young little <laughs> Dinah? <laughs> I well, you know, everybody who has the theater bug, uh, yes. I'm sure you know about this, yes. uh, you know, you envision your life as a star. You yes, know, you, you, Broadway you, star. Yeah, you know, course, it's going to happen. Course. Yes. Um, so I... I went through high school and college acting in every opportunity I had. When uh, you when you went to Yale, was yes. that drama too? Uh, undergrad theater program. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, Go that's ahead. fine. Okay. So, so you were in Edina and you were doing all that, and you envision. Yeah, you want to you want to yeah. make it big. You want to. Of course. Have, but then you know you, you kind of get through the college experience and you actually hit the real world, and you know it's sometimes not easy to get cast in things, and no. it's certainly not easy to get things in Oh, cast I, in things I always that pay get well. cast. What, what's rejection? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the word. I guess it ruh, ruh, ruh. <laughs> Well, I always joke. I, I left acting because of the rejection. Now I do fundraising, where there, surely there's no rejection <laughs> there's there. There's never any rejection there. <laughs> but, you know, I, I still found a way to keep creativity part of my life. I, I, I write, I used to act, uh, and then I do think that the work that I do on behalf of a nonprofit like Hartford Stage or Dallas Theater Center is still creative and it's still keeping uh, my, my heartbeat close to the stage. Mm -hmm. Well, and what, one of the things, and speaking of heartbeat, it's nice because it's so important at, as a community service to Hartford. Because mm -hmm. don't you think Hartford still gets a bad rap? You know, I, it's so you funny. Know? As a new guy, let me just say, <laughs> I, I don't... I don't get the bad rap. Isn't I mean, it horrible? Some, it is. Somebody said, you know, I, I, I moved here from, from California. Right. And somebody once said to me, I kid you not, 
It is the pimple between <laughs> New York City and Boston. That's terrible. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? And uh, yeah, but and I I think that Hartford Stage does a lot. It helps well, the it you. helps yeah, the restaurants. Absolutely. And, and it helps just that that um, that exciting energy that people need to feel when they walk out on those sidewalks, like they do right. in New York. I mean, of course, it's not the same experience, but but with the help of Harvard Stage and Theater Works, I'm I'm mm -hmm. really really hoping that that we can invigorate. Right. Well, and, and even yeah. CT Improv Theater, which is now downtown yes, and CT a wonderful Improv. underground space. Oh, they're I mean, fantastic. There's, yeah. There's just a little bit more vibrancy, and I think that people are starting to live downtown. And I think once we kind of get critical mass downtown, it'll feel more bustly. Right. Um, you know, but as far as what Harvard Stage does, I definitely think we attract people to the downtown area and fill up restaurants and, you know, make people feel like, okay, there's there's a destination here. But then so does the Wadsworth, so does Theater Works. I think there's a lot to come to downtown Hartford for. Right, right. And it right. just seems unfair that we get such a bad I laugh. know, <laughs> I know. And what I, what, what I like is that there is that there is a, an exciting nightlife mm -hmm. feel. Yeah, absolutely. When you, when, when you go to and from and, and people are happy and... <laughs> Yeah, because it, yeah, it, it's it's like it doesn't even make it to, to junior varsity as far as cities go. <laughs> right. <laughs> I will say, you know, we were talking about Anastasia earlier. It was fun when uh, we were doing that show. That show, because it was an animated movie in the late 1990s, there's sort of a built-in fan base. Most people oh. who were young teenage girls at that time have really fond memories of oh, that sure. film. And I think young I'm girls sure. growing up still Well, do. wasn't it like the biggest... Tech, Technicolor, or like a really huge deal at the time. It was the first, something uh, like that, I don't know that if movie. I don't think so, but oh, it was, it was, it was very popular. Yeah. And there are people who love that movie so much that they, that we had people come from Malaysia to see our production of Anastasia. We had people come from New Zealand, London, Berlin, Canada, Alaska. It, and they were so excited to, to be there for the world premiere. And they would wait outside by the stage door. I mean, these cast members would come out and there'd be a line down the block of Church Street to get autographs and meet the cast. And that kind of excitement was really fun to witness. Right, we called them right. Fanastasias. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because they were there, they were there because they, they loved that movie. They loved the songs that uh, Lynn Aarons and Stephen Flaherty wrote for the movie. Right. And they expanded on that score for the, the stage version. And uh, they were just beyond themselves. I mean, they, they couldn't believe that they had this opportunity to see another version of this story. Right, and it's kind of got that Titanic appeal because it really is a tragic story. I mean, well, not too tragic, but... Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, uh, that, that family didn't fare too well. Well, no, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, but still, there, there are really, really, like, uber fans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so, then you went off to college in yeah. New Haven, to, yep. Yale. And what, what we, and where did you try your writing then? You know, I wasn't doing much writing at that point. At that point, I was still with the acting bug. I thought, okay, this is, this is where I'm going to do it. And I really, I think at, at least two shows a semester, sometimes three or four. So I was constantly acting. And uh, at the time, and I, I assume it's still this way, I don't know for sure, but any space on the property of Yale was viable theater space. So squash courts, dining halls, Cross campus lawn. Uh, I even performed a Shakespeare piece in a train tunnel once. I mean, we were eager to perform that, anywhere we could that's find space. That's such a great experience. Yeah. So, wow, well, those are just golden memories. Oh, I fantastic. Bet. Yeah. And just the opportunity to, you know, I think I acted in six Shakespeare plays while I was in college, and just getting those characters under my belt and speaking those words it's wonderful was so exciting it's yeah. really wonderful and your your whole body transforms when you get into character oh absolutely i love all that well <laughs> well you know what uh, well you may not know what one of my my um theme songs is it's never too late to go for your dreams <laughs> that's a very <laughs> valid point it, it isn't it isn't and i'm really really happy that you're still attaining your creative dream with, with your job at Hartford Stage. Oh, thank for you. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So now, um, if, if people want, want to get tickets, um, they, ca sure. they can call the box office. You can call the box office, which is 860-527-5151. Mm -hmm. Or you can log on to our website, which is www.hartfordstage.org. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, 
how I was able to see the Kevin Bacon play, because it felt, I, I'm sorry I keep calling it that, rear window. Rear window. <laughs> I, I'm like super fit. <laughs> but uh, when, when I saw that, I got, it, I got some tickets through Craigslist. Oh, really? Which was nice, yeah. Well, uh, the best way to make sure you don't miss a show is to become a subscriber. <laughs> Touche! Yes. And, uh, we even have things. You always need those. We do need those. And there are some affordable options. Uh, you can subscribe during previews, which is less expensive than during the main run. And if you are under 35, we have something exciting called Stage Pass for just $99. Oh, good, I qualify. <laughs> you can come and see all the shows in our season. And you get really? guest passes for just 20 bucks. I'm sorry, could you say it one more time? That's really exciting. $99. For the whole season. Uh, and then if you want to bring a guest, the guest comes for 20 bucks. This is for people between ages of 21 and 35. That's fantastic. Yeah. We get a really remarkable grant from the Burry Frederick Foundation to help us reach out to young audience members. That is great. Also, we don't have time to talk about it now, but there is also education over there, which, oh. uh, and Robert Reeder does oh, a great job. Yeah, he does. I, I, I adore Robert, yeah. I gotta just at least say this, that like, we serve 20,000 students every year, and the education staff that we have is dedicated, they are talented, and the work that they do in Hartford Public Schools, oh, uh, yeah. in after school programs, and in classes that kids come to us for, they're just amazing, and they really transform kids' lives. Oh, they do. You know, I, I was involved in the, um, the the breakdancing Shakespeare. Oh, breakdancing yeah. Shakespeare, yeah. And the teachers are so passionate. Yeah. And the kids are so sincere. I loved it. I, I just love Harvard State. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I met you. And, and I'm so glad that you're, you're part of one of my favorite theaters in the world. Oh, thank you so, so much. I'm going to have to have you come back. I'd be glad to. And remember, it's never too late to go for your dreams. <laughs> oh, my, my other motto. Are you ready? I'm ready. There's plenty of room at the top. <laughs> Of course there is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with, with that said, good night, and make sure I will see you at Hartford Stage.